The ultimate goal advertised by this business is entrepreneurship and owning your own business. After a year of selling enough stuff or signing up enough people for services and duplicating yourself to enough people on your team, you have the opportunity to break off into your own company and become the owner. You run the morning meetings, conduct interviews, hire marketing reps, and do the easy work of sitting in the office and running national conference calls, and maybe take off by noon. You will likely make six figures a year, and that will increase as you hire more people to increase the number of shows you run, while you sit back and eventually accumulate unthinkable wealth with minimal work. This is how ownership is sold, in every morning meeting, leaders meeting, and national leaders conference. But it's completely untrue starting with the lie of getting out of the field. I think a big thing about ownership is that they tell you that you're going to be out of the field and working like four hours a day. I was in the field every day, except for two days in May, because my friends were teachers and I went to Myrtle Beach with them. I only took off two days the entire year I was an owner. I hit my year of being an owner and I was miserable. I was in the field and I was like, oh my God, like what is, what is happening? Like all these things that they said, like when you're an owner, you're going to have more time to be able to like do this. You can have free time, you know? And instead I'm like struggling to be able to find people to come to all my shows and be there. And I'm there myself after I've just interviewed people that I don't even care about. This whole time now for time later thing they teach you, it's like whose definition of later because you go through the field and it's give your time now in the field and you can have your time later when you're an owner and yet what is it that they teach you your first year of ownership is be in the field every day with your guys always be training your guys get in the field get in the field get in the field well, what is it that you just told me in the field where once I graduate that and I get into ownership I don't have to do that shit anymore so it's this this roundabout circle of, of no exit. You can't get out of it. You're always going to be in the field. All the owners I knew still went to the field. Even the guy who was three generations above us, who would walk in with like Louis belts and really nice watches on, still go to the field. Because the opportunity is so much that like time now for time later. Whereas, like if you look at the people who are in the later stage except for the real high up consultants, they're all still in the field. And I barely saw my family. I spent every holiday in the field. My aunt and my mom were in town and I couldn't even, I was on conference calls where we were sitting having lunch together. I just remember like getting off the call and being like, you know, this is all gonna be worth it and I love what I'm doing. And I was like completely lying, you know, to myself and to my family about, you know, how happy I was. And when I closed my office, all my friends, like on Facebook, like every social media, everything, they were like, oh my God, I thought you were doing so well. And like, I was like, no, I'm doing great. Like I'm doing really well, but not mentally, not emotionally, I'm not doing well. I'm doing well as far as the standards of the company and what their expectations are, I'm doing well. But I was not, I was completely lying to myself that I was working towards something that just was unrealistic. And recently my owner has been like, I feel like she's kind of losing her mind um, because I don't think she's, I honestly don't think she's making money. I'm always telling her to eat. I'm always telling her to go home. I'm always like, can you just go do something fun? Like, can you just meet up with people that aren't work? She's missing her, she's not her sister's maid of honor. We were talking about the holidays coming up and Christmas and like days off and things like that. And... Um, I was like, are you going to go home? And she said, no, like, I just want a day of no stress, no work, no nothing, and going home would be a little bit stressful. Um, and I was like, oh, okay. And she was like, this is my first day off in a year. Then there are the lies surrounding the main reason so many people stay in the business, financial freedom, specifically making seventy-five to dollars to $100,000 a year as an owner. There is no one that I know of and I've kept in touch with a lot of people who have left the business. And there's no one that I know of who made nearly that, um, at least in the last six years of 
you know, people being wow. promoted. Yeah. So that, it's just unrealistic. Don't make 75000 You just, an, an average owner does not make $75,000. They just, you know, find an average owner who, that, who paid themselves $75,000. It's going to be really hard. <laughs> in like six months, I made 50 grand. So it was like, woo, it's right. It's true. Like it actually, like it, it makes this like thing believable. And so I never passed 50 grand. That's, that's the difference. You make a lot of money very quickly <laughs> and then you never are able to like overcross that. So when they're like giving you advice, when you've already like made all this money, you're like, okay okay and that's why you start like agreeing with them and then after that you start realizing like wait a minute like this isn't actually working i think the highest even personally that i ever heard of a rookie owner making in their their first year was maybe 50k um you you make you pay yourself what you make in the field right so Theoretically, you're supposed to be so good in the field that when you get promoted to owner, the fact that you only have really half a day in the field, unless you have Costco's and it's a little longer, it shouldn't really matter. Because you're so good in the field, you should be able to make that up. But when you have interviews for your first half of the day, and then you only get half of the day in the field, which means you're basically going, like I said, 6 a.m. to 10 at night, you're, you're not really making much. You're making field money, if that. I know for sure he was not making money because I was calculating the amount of money that was coming in. And as acting manager and someone that was trusted with money, <laughs> I can see the amount of money that's coming in and the amount of money that has to go out when you include bills, rent, to keep the lights on, everything, supplies, pay your admins, pay everything. He showed us the entire breakdown and I knew for sure that he was not making any money. You're having these meetings and you're not the same anymore. You're running these opportunity meetings. You're like, but I'm not making that. Like now you're like looking at it from a different perspective because you're outside of like your body. Like it's, you're like, wow, like what am I doing? Like I was just saying this stuff, like me. And then, you know, you start looking at it, you're like, Mm, I don't really want to run an opportunity meeting this week. I don't want to run another opportunity meeting this week. Like, so you stop wanting to run these meetings because you're not motivated yourself. You're like, this isn't real. After that full year of being in the business, I was like, as an owner, being in the business as an owner, I was like, this is nowhere near what I was promised, like at all. This is not at all what I was being told. And also I got exhausted from like es essentially lying to my people that it was a real opportunity. And I think that people in my interviews could tell that I was not really believing what I was saying anymore, you know, in like my, my meetings and my interviews and stuff like that, because I wasn't at all living that lifestyle that I was promoting. If you're in like one of these offices and you hear in your morning meeting, like you don't want to be like the guy who makes 50 grand forever. Like the guy who makes 50 grand right now has a much better life than you probably ever will in this business. Many owners in this business live with multiple other people and cannot afford their own living space, their own car, or even basic essentials. I lived with six other dudes for a year in a three bedroom apartment. And that was as an owner? As an owner, yeah, because I brought everyone with me. I brought six dudes with me. We're all in the damn house. I lived in the living room only because it had the TV. And I just started seeing small small things that weren't sitting right as far as like seeing the going over to the boss's house for the first time and seeing that four other people that work for him live there and they're all kind of like stacked on top of each other you got two couches that are filled by two people that are sleeping on the couches in the living room and you've got every single room in the house pretty much put in i was like well if this this guy is supposedly making well over a hundred thousand dollars a year why is he having people inside his house he made a co-worker drive out an hour and 10 minutes to pick him up at 5.20 a.m. in the morning because he doesn't have his own car. Him and several people were at this original office and now like him and two others from the first office all live together. He asked me for gas money. Like he used to steal out of Walmart we were working. Like, like one time he just told me, hey man, hold this bag and come walk with me. 
and I, I walked to the parking lot in his car. And he's just pulling out like steaks and like ribs, <laughs> just raw <brought> meat. <laughs> I was just like, he was like, yeah, man, uh, this rent that I had to pay, the office rent that I had to pay really kicked my tail, you know. Even though you are called the owner and sign paperwork that makes you the president of a business entity, you are constantly monitored, influenced, and even disciplined by your promoting owner, the regional and national consultants, and the executives of the parent company. They'll tell you you have your own business. They say you're going to have this business, this is going to be your own business, this is your own office. But the truth of the matter is that is not yours, that is never yours, it is never going to be yours. You will always, always be an employee. As a manager, all you really are is uh, an entry-level person on a bigger scale because it's, it's st everything starts over again. Every single one of those, those offices also needs to follow a regional script. Mm -hmm. So when we were at you know, the leadership conference and we were writing up or editing you know, some of like, the national marketing materials and the national marketing pamphlets, I go, national? <laughs> like, really, what was this about everybody having their own business and having independence? And then they're telling me how I should be spending my money, where I should be putting it. Um, and when I didn't want to do that anymore, then they would be coming to my office and then they would be like blowing us up on phone calls and saying like, oh, this person isn't doing this and that and this and that. This is what I noticed. And you could tell that it was about you, but it's because you're not listening to them of how you want to allocate your money. And it's your money, but they want to manipulate you how you need to spend it. And if you don't do that, then you're gonna be treated like crap. My mentors were telling me that if I wanted to succeed long-term and I wanted to promote people out that I needed to be in the field every day, so I was. And um, yeah, I, it's, they were mentally abusive, <laughs> verbally abusive. They know, they, know what your goal, they know what your triggers are, so they ask, you know, that's why they, they like create just enough relationship with you so they know what motivates you and what will, you know, get under your skin and make you do what, what you should do. She won a Rookie Manager of the Year her first year due to her team um, that had followed her. She promoted somebody out who's actually still in the business. And then she basically got scolded by some of the higher ups because she wanted to have the work-life balance that was always promised to her. And then as soon as it came out that like, hey, you can't be taking this like weekend vacation here or you can't be going doing this whenever you want. You have a business to run. She was like, you know what? This isn't really what I signed up for. This isn't what you guys told me. So she backed out as well. Unlike actual business owners in any other industry, you have no control over anything. You have no control over where you open your office. When I got promoted, they were like, you have to move. And you're already kind of like so far deep in, like they didn't tell me until I was an assistant manager, I was working my ass off to like get there. And then it's like a month later of working my ass off as an assistant manager and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, like we can't split the Miami territory and you're gonna have to go somewhere else. But luckily Orlando just opened because an owner just shut down. You have no control over who you can promote to assistant manager. Everyone higher up was like, you have to let her go. And she technically had enough to be able to get promoted to assistant manager, but the higher ups, they were like, you can't technically promote her because she's not making like 600 net. They were like, you know, if she can't get it, like you can't promote her. Like you're gonna have to let her go. Like she's been around for too long, blah, blah, blah. So I ended up letting her go, which was the worst mistake that I made in my business because she built so many relationships with everybody and people couldn't believe that I was letting go of someone that had leaders on their team and just wasn't hitting the sales when it wasn't about sales. So everyone quit. And most importantly, you have no control over the money you make. A separate bank account controlled by the parent company makes sure they have absolute control over your money. Definitely, there are two accounts and they have complete control over them because again, you sign it, you sign that you're gonna let them quote unquote assist you and guide you in your finances. You will get awards. So those people that are holding all those awards are the people that put 
have 50 grand or 25 grand or whatever it is like in their holdings. So it's not technically possession is nine tenths of the law. You know, it's not technically your money. Like, I mean, it is, but like, they'll be like, you have, you know, like 10 grand in your bank account and you have 25 grand in this bank account. Well, you can't pull out that money. I had a business account and I had a personal account and I wasn't, I wasn't ever allowed to touch the business account unless it was a business expense and I could only pay myself off of the field. And that is how it is for a really, really long time after ownership. So when in the interview they talk about however, however much money an owner makes, that's in the business account and it's not your money. Basically, he told on himself. He was like, yeah, the guy who's over my financials and stuff like that, the smart server, his name is David. He has my online mobile banking app credentials, like his password and username for his online banking account. And I said, Dylan, do you hear yourself? He was like, what? I was like, if he has access to your online banking credentials, he can do stuff to your account. He was like, nah, he can't touch me. I said, Dylan. I can go into your account right now. I can do something with it. He's like, nah, they can just look at it. I said, okay. When they break down all the theoretical numbers in the opportunity meetings, you are taught that you, as the owner, get to take home any money that is left over after you pay your office expenses, business expenses, and the salary of your reps. This carrot of wealth is a common factor keeping many people in the business. Turns out, it is a blatant lie. When you get into ownership and you're on those ownership calls, they basically say that you, I mean, if you work really, 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 really hard, you'll be lucky to make that much money in a year in your business account, not your personal account. So you theoretically, get. you could make less as an owner than when you were standing in a store as a leader. Yes, most definitely. Hmm. And if you decide to quit, don't expect any of that money, your money, to be yours. Once you decide to quit, all that money that is in their account is frozen and you can't touch it when you decide to leave because you have all their inventory. Right. So you have to send back all of your inventory. They have to count it and they have to, you know, agree with you that you, they got all of it back, which is very risky because they could lie and say, Oh, we never got, you know, this whole palette they ended up coming back saying that I owed like seven grand for um, my missing inventory. It's just funny because whenever I closed my office, I thought I had almost $25,000 in my local account. I did, I had that much money in my local bank account when I closed. I was like, I can live off of this until I find a new job easy i've been living off of 17 grand this year you know so i was like i can live off of this for a couple months until i find a new job well literally when i went to close my office it was like a week later we had my call and all my money except for a thousand dollars had been moved to my home office account because that's standard operating procedures is what i was told so i'm over here broke no job. I have no way of like getting income at this point. I actually still owe a lot of money personally on the bank account that it's open in. It's ruined my credit. <laughs> I wasn't taught how to shut down or anything like that. So I didn't take it. And to my understanding, there would have been legal consequences to taking any of that money, you know, mm -hmm. but in the same time, the bank account was in my name. And Larissa called and cussed me out and told me that I didn't F and understand about the, the company and like, you know, like I should be grateful when I'm selfish and um, I don't know anything about business. My manager came down and put a lock on my storage unit. Like I was some kind of criminal <laughs> that I was gonna go sell all this inventory. And that I, you know, I was like, I have been such a good business, business partner to you, to this entire company. I've been so responsible and so communicative and organized. And then this is how you treat me at the end of it. And then literally no one helped me close. I had to reach out to former owners to help me close. Not surprisingly, even the supposedly most successful owners who eat, sleep, and breathe this business are not nearly as successful as what they themselves advertise. There's a regional B VP that I did my um, assistant management training with and straight up told me that she pays herself $40,000 a year. 
a regional VP. When she told me to my face that she's been in the company for what, like six or seven years now? So I don't even know how long. That was maybe six years when I, yeah, she's been in the business for a long time. And she's paying herself $40,000, but she was really, she really held on to the fact that she was able to buy a $4,000 bed and not wink an eye at it. And if there are, you know, regional consultants that are so successful that are still in the field, which there are. Yeah. Why in the hell would you want to do that? Because you're brainwashed. If you actually did own your own business, somebody else wouldn't be able to come in and shut you down without warning. But that's exactly what happens in the slave circle. They always promote that you're, you can't fire yourself, right? They always promote, I don't know if you saw those in your opportunity meetings too, but if you're an entrepreneur, you can never fire yourself. No, you, you can get fired in Smart Circle. <laughs> a retrain is being, is being terminated. If you don't say yes to a job you don't want, you're fired. And you don't get unemployment. So you're terminated without unemployment. They called me one day and they were like, hey, good news. <laughs> you're going on a retrain. We're going to shut your office down. So this is great. You're going to go up to Cincinnati. Not Cincinnati. They were going to send me to Cleveland with my, um, with my promoting owner. And they were like, get out of your lease, do all this, da 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 da. And I was like, it was, I was shell shocked. I was like, I gotta think about this. You shut your office down. Um, you go to whatever owner that they send you to, because you don't have a choice in it. They'll send you to whoever they want you to go to. They tell you to go back to leadership, do it all over again. And then you open up. Hopefully, your market is still open. Because if you want to keep your livelihood, you want to stay where you've been, then, I mean, you'll, you'll be lucky to go back to your hometown. They told me I might go back to my hometown. And then another Smart Circle office opened up right after. But some people stay on a retrain for, like, years. If they do become an owner, nine out of ten of those are being shut down. So it's not a realistic representation of what they're doing. And these were owners who I've worked side by side with, and I've never seen anybody in my life, Alex, work as hard as these people do. I mean, they'll they'll be an owner for a year. They get up every day. They're in the office at 6 a.m. They're, they're not home till 10 p.m. They have one day off in a whole year, and they're making $25,000, $30,000 a year. And then they get shut down. They have no money. It affects them. It affects their families. You don't run your own business at all they can shut you down whenever in this business even if you become an owner you are not an entrepreneur you are a pawn when people would call me I'd, I'd ask them you know before I told them why I left I was like why why do you want to stay you know why do you want to be an owner and they said money free time I was like well guess what after I closed my office after taxes, after my bank reconciliation, I still don't have my money. And what I will get is almost $10,000. And that's all I'm leaving with after taxes. Uh, my boyfriend was like, this is a scheme. You need to get out of this. And I'm like, no, but this is like entrepreneurship. This is where you know you can learn how to be an entrepreneur, run your own business. And they're like, this is not your business. <laughs> I'm like, it will be my business. And then my, and then my mom is like, how? So you telling me that you become a manager and then they just pay you 75K, 100K a year starting, you know, right after you get promoted? I'm like, yeah. And then they're like, what? How? Where? This sounds like a scam. It sounds way too good to be true, which it is. Yeah, like if anybody who's in the business is watching this, um, yeah, like really look at, like try and think critically of what you're seeing around you. Because when you really start to question it, the whole thing starts to fall apart. Are you really happy? Or are you just lying to yourself? Just like I was. I was literally sitting there every single day and just waking up and casting myself in all these lies that what we do every day is lie to people without realizing it. And you have to start, like, thinking more about the red flags of, like, okay, this doesn't seem right. And wait, why doesn't seem right? Don't just, like, put it over your head. 
analyze all situations, analyze why people are on um, your weekly calls of your how much money you make uh, or your weekly rotation calls or whatever they are for your money and why people are giving you advice on how much money you just made on your last rotation and where you should be allocating and spending it and what you should be doing and why didn't you make X amount of dollars and why do you also have to, you know, call people, you know, and break down your day if you're not doing well yourself? Like, why do you have to do all these things? Why do you have to work until 10 p.m.? How long have you been in the business? Why are you, why are you not taking vacations? What What's going on? Like, why are you being, why are you lying to yourself? just listen to what people have to say with an open mind and not be so close minded about, you know, we're not trying to scam you. You already have been scammed. We are the real people that are talking to give you a point that is true because we've been there. And just like they say, like, listen to your elders, listen to the people that already messed up.